Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about scenario-driven app development, a method to speed up development feedback loop inside the app development team. The main idea is to discuss how we can split big features into smaller chunks of development tasks and continuously deliver the results of those tasks to relevant stakeholders inside the development team. Short introduction about myself. I am currently living in Singapore having to build a digital bank app at Grab, and you can reach me on different online platforms. To explain the concept, let imagine that we are working at a company which wants to develop a photo catalog app with two features, showing a list of photos from a remote server and showing a list of favorite photos added by the users. This is a typical setup of an app with multiple features. This is also the simple app to demonstrate the capability of the open source framework that I will introduce you later. To develop such an app with multiple features, we would have a mobile development team who works on different features of the app. Since the developers are often split into multiple feature teams, working on isolated features, we have to be very careful to work together because we are working on the same code base on the same app. There will be dependencies between teams and sometimes chains in one team can affect the others. For that reason, we generally need tools to support the teams to work to, in parallel so that we can deliver multiple features simultaneously and also help to maintain the integrity of the code base. Another challenge is that the external dependencies such as backend APIs, the designs, and the copies of the features are not ready during the development phase or in some working environments such as banks uh, the development backends are protected behind complicated network proxy setup so it is not an easy task to test our apps on real devices the mobile team needs a tool to abstract at such dependency during the development phase adding to those challenges we also have many other stakeholders to communicate with each of them has very different expectations what they want to see during the development phase. For example, QA team wants to be able to run a specific feature for testing purpose. Designer team concentrates on appearance and interactions of the user interface. Backend team wants to inspect the network response from the mobile app to ensure that the API contracts are respected. And the list go on up to the CEO who wants to experience the product from the end user point of view. We also need to test the app in different scenarios, such as backend is not reachable, uh, device is in airplane mode, device has light or dark user interface, device is in different time zones or locations. All of those requirements must be supported and tested in an easy and more or less automated way. So as you can see, to develop a mobile app, the mobile team has a lot of challenges. We have feature story with multiple requirements. We have multiple stakeholders to communicate with. We have multiple environment and configurations that need to be supported and tested. Members of the team often work on multi features in parallel. UI components often have multiple states uh, that we need to develop for, such as happy state, error state, loading state, or empty state. Mobile app deployment is complicated since we are depending on third-party channels such as the app stores to deliver the products. And the separation of development and production code is very important as well. To overcome such challenge during the development phase, mobile development team often provides a development app to speed up the feedback loop both internally and externally. One common pattern I have seen in many teams is that they have not fully utilized the power of the development app. They normally try to use the development app as an early version of the production app with a hidden debug screen which can adjust, adjust the behavior of the app in very limited way. Another pattern is to change the behavior during compiling time, which leads to the problem that they need to deliver multiple apps for multiple purposes. This approach doesn't really scale and sometimes it adds more complexity to the team since they have to maintain many versions of the app separately. So in the next sessions, I will propose another approach called scenario-driven development, 
where we can use the development app to deliver incremental updates from feature teams to the targeted audience effortlessly. The approach is supported by an open source framework which can simplify the setup and configurations for such a development app. So first, let's discuss what is a scenario. Imagine we have a front-end feature to develop. The feature can be described by the product manager like this. Given an input, I would expect an output. But for the development team, uh, they do have to take into consideration many other factors, such as which backend the feature is connecting to, development staging or production, which device with which hardware features, it is connected to internet, it, it is running in light or dark user interface, etc. That means the feature can be executed in very different scenarios, which is the combination of many different inputs. So to simplify the requirement, we will define a scenario for our feature by fixing the dynamic factors so that we can deliver the expected output for a set of predefined inputs and configurations. Here is a simple scenario for our home screen feature. The home screen will display a list of photos from a remote source in a grid layout. The current scenario shows the home screen in happy case with guarantees respond from a mock server and the device runs with light mode user interface. We have another scenario for the same component here showing the UI in arrow case and the device running on a dark user interface. We can see here, for example, is the workflow for the development of our home screen. We start with the smallest component, in this case, a collection view cell. Then move on to develop the collection view. Then to the home screen. And finally, I embedded the home screen in the dashboard. All of those steps can be demonstrated continuously in our development app and can be reviewed by anyone in the development team. That means the development team can visually demonstrate the progress of the feature development to other stakeholders continuously using the development app without waiting until the finished feature is integrated into the production app. If you have been working with SwiftUI, you will find a similar concept via SwiftUI previews, where we can also get visual previews of our UI components under predefined configurations. This is great for development since we can develop UI components in isolation, but we can't easily deliver such previews to other stakeholders, especially non-technical ones, since they will have to set up the same development environment to be able to see the previews. To support delivering the scenarios easily, an open source framework is created to help creating up a development app easily automatically generating UI to display all scenarios and extending the usage of scenarios for different purposes, such as in unit tests or UI tests. But the last thing you want to happen is accidentally shipping all those scenarios into production. Separation between the development and production apps into separate targets is therefore recommended. And the code that we use to support our development are linked only to the development version of the app. This is to ensure that we will not ship the scenarios for our features in the production app. Now I will give you some demos how we can use the scenarios to develop our photo catalog app. As you can see here, we have two different apps. One is the production version of the app and the other is the internal or development version of the app. Let's start the production apps. First, we need to enter the API key for the photo service we are using. Then we can advance to the home screen features where you can see the photos fetch from the remote service. Then we can go to one of the photo details, add it to the favorite, and we can see the photo in the favorite feature here. Now I will start the internal app. So in the first screen of this internal app, you will see a list of the scenario that we developed for the app. Now let's go through some of the scenarios in the scenario app. The networking scenario showing the raw network response. It can be used to verify the API contracts and for debugging purpose. 
I will start the scenario app here and go to the networking scenario. As you can see, uh, we can uh, inspect the raw network response here in the UI. I will try to change some parameter. And you can verify that we can get a different response for different parameter. The screen and flow scenarios can be used to demonstrate the flows for specific screens or features. For example, the home screen when fetch data from a remote server, we will need different states to describe different behavior of the home screen. So, as you can see here, we can simulate those states visually into different scenarios, such as the arrow case. the happy case, the loading case, and the ring response from the remote server. Feature scenarios can be used to demonstrate the functionalities of a feature in isolation. It is important to have parallelized the workflows so that multiple teams can work independently from each other. For example, we have here two feature scenarios for our home and favorite features. As you can see, I don't have to enter an API key before opening the home feature scenario since I have prepared that in background using the scenario framework. And you also don't see the top bar here since we only open the home feature in isolation. And for the favorites feature scenario, I can open the scenario and see immediately some favorite photos without having to go to the home feature to add photos since I have prepared this mock data before opening the scenario using the scenario framework. So this kind of scenario can be used as well for the automated UI testing. The design system scenario can be used to demo the UI design system visually. For example, here I have a scenario to show all the typography styles I have in the app. I can review those styles in both light mode and dark mode. The UI gallery scenario shows different state of a UI component. It is helpful to create a UI component catalog to share with the designer team for review. For example, here I have a scenario to show the different state of the collection view cell, where the photo can be loaded or not. The environment scenario is useful to testing the app running against different backends in runtime without distributing multiple versions of the app. For example, here, I have a mock environment scenario and a production environment scenario. For the mock environment scenario, I don't have to enter a valid API key because I mock every uh, response from the backend here. But for the production environment scenario, I have to provide a valid API key so that I can load the RIND uh, response from the remote service. In the context of scenario-driven development method, a scenario is equivalent to a development task. By composing those tasks or scenarios together, we can build up our feature gradually and can easily communicate our progress to relevant stakeholders. Here is simple code for a scenario to display different configurations for the grid item view, which is the component to show a single photo in the grid view. The scenario protocol defines some metadata, uh, such as name and kind, so that we can categorize and search for this scenario. The main functionality of the scenario protocol is to provide a root view controller, so that we can show it as a root view of our scenario app. The scenario framework gives developer own freedom to decide what they want to show in the root view controller. In this example, I have embedded two different grid item view using different mock data to demonstrate different states in happy case and arrow case. We can embed a view controller of a screen for screen scenario 
a root view controller per feature for feature scenario or even a root view controller of the whole app for environment scenario here. As you can see, the mechanism works very similar to Swift UI previews. In summary, the Scenarios framework provides an infrastructure to create a development app with scenarios easily. It has a set of protocols to define different kinds of scenarios. It can generate a scenario catalog screen automatically. It supports targeted scenario deliveries, such as we can deliver a version of our development app containing only scenarios relevant to designers or QAs. And it is fully open source and you can find it on GitHub. There is one more thing I want to share how I personally have used the scenario system to increase my productivity in working on iOS app. Since the code we add to the scenarios is separated from the production app, the scenario app is a great place to do prototyping or trying new fancy technologies. Imagine that your main app can't use Swift UI Combine or the new async await because of iOS version constraint. You can try those technologies inside the scenario app without worrying that you could break your production app. Or in this example, I'm going to show you how I'm using this open source infection yield to add hot reloading capability to one of my iOS projects. So you can see here, I have added a prototype hot reloading scenario. Um, when I start it. You can see that it shows the uh, UI that I added before here. So now let's try to change the background color to red. Save it. You can see that the background color is refreshed automatically without me recompiling and rerunning the scenario app. You can also change some text here. As you can see here, the tag is updated live as well. In summary, the Scenarios framework provides an infrastructure to create a development app with scenarios easily. It has a set of protocols to define different kinds of scenarios. It can generate a scenario catalog screen automatically. It supports targeted scenario deliveries, such as we can deliver a version of our development app containing only scenarios relevant to designers or QAs. And it is fully open source and you can find it on GitHub. The original idea of the scenario system is from the NHS COVID-19 app, which is also open source on GitHub. Since I, since I find the method is very useful and can be applied to other projects as well, I have generalized the idea and add more capabilities to the framework. And that's all for my talk. Thank you very much for watching.